by societal trends and two of the major trends facing us are urbanization and aging. And as you think about the, um, these trends, it seems clear that the, the solution to addressing these trends in terms of providing mobility for people in the future will be uh, along five vectors. Uh, small, shared, electric, network, autonomous vehicles, we see. And you can have any combination of those. So you could have small EVs, you could have shared EVs, you could have networked vehicles that aren't EVs, you could have small networked vehicles, you could have autonomous vehicles. But the, the combination of these five elements of a small vehicle that's easy to park, easy to maneuver, that doesn't take up much space in dense cities, a networked vehicle that can manage traffic, find parking spaces more easily, avoid collisions with other vehicles, an autonomous vehicle that's <coughs> capable of providing mobility for the aged population, um, a small vehicle, again, that's easy to uh, park, and an electric vehicle that produces uh, zero local uh, emissions and can encourage the use of diverse energy sources and hopefully renewable energy sources. So we see the solution set for urban mobility in the future being quite straightforward. It is truly a, an NV, we call it NV electric network vehicle, and it will be capable of manual operation and autonomous operation. Also, it will be very interesting how we integrate these vehicles with public transport systems. Today, uh, we think in terms of all when it comes to energy sources, so you have proponents of one energy source over another, but really we need all of them, whether it's electricity, hydrogen, biofuels, natural gas, etc. Same thing with mobility. We don't need public transport or personal transport. We need both, and we need to find ways how they can integrate together more effectively. And today's cars are really not set up to integrate public transport systems other than you know, taking a ferry, uh, putting a car on a ferry and going across the river. But in the future, if you have small vehicles that are easy to park and easy to dock onto a train or can provide last mile operation to, to complement the train system or the bus system, especially at night time when the buses may not be very energy efficient at moving people around because they're not fully utilized, we think there's a lot of interesting opportunities in the future enabled by connectivity, enabled by electrification, and enabled by the small footprint of these vehicles to do something that really optimizes transport for the city in the future. So how far out is that? It's a pretty big, ambitious rethink. Um, well, it, it depends on how, again, of these five vectors, you can take any combination of them. So you, you see in cities around the world today, you see uh, car sharing beginning to happen. So that's an example. You see EV sharing. So that's taking two of those ideas, an electric vehicle and a shared vehicle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect in the future more and more networking and multimodal integration between personal and public transport with conventional vehicles. With conventional vehicles, you'll see vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications beginning, beginning to happen over time. So that, these, that yeah, I, I, well, I'm hoping in the next five to ten years, you'll see vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications becoming more prevalent. So I, I, I do think a lot of this will also be driven by what the city regulates. In the 20th century, cars were regulated by federal authorities when it came to fuel economy and tailpipe emissions and crash standards, but I think in the future, cities are going to begin to more and more regulate the types of vehicles that people will use. So what, what are you, where, where are you at GM with this now? Are you testing this, or is this all just on computer yeah. simulations? Or what? We are um, developing the next generation of our electric network vehicle that we showed at the Shanghai World Expo last year. We're working with an eco-city in China, the largest eco-city in China, just outside Tianjin. It's a new city that's being created, which will hold about 350,000 people by the end of the decade, if they're according to their plans. And so it's a, it's a new city that's being created, and we want to work with them to integrate this next generation vehicle into that infrastructure. It's not a car-free infrastructure. I mean, they're not taking a draconian approach and banning cars, but there is an opportunity, because it's early stages, to influence the infrastructure to enable these vehicles to coexist safely with traditional cars.